Hi everyone. It's been a long time and we're back to another podcast with Triwani. So this week I have Chaitanya here to discuss about tennis. Hi Chaitanya, how are you? Hi Siva, I'm good. How are you? Very good. It's been a while since we recorded uh, our last podcast and it was uh, 2020 November 15 and it's been a long long time and uh, there was a lot of uh, changes uh, both in our uh, personal and professional lives how are you feeling yeah i'm feeling all right i recently started a new job very good that's something which i'm excited and it's going well and you got married how is your marriage life <laughs> it's very good thanks for asking i'm very you excited are, and you're about to yeah a lot of changes happening in my personal life very very excited about the future as well yeah so how is your tennis going yeah I'm, i haven't been playing much uh because of this winter uh yeah apart from that yeah i i i can't say that i've improved so much because i did not play a lot of tennis last year because of the pandemic and everything mm I've become a better doubles player but I stand mm. at the same place where I am in singles I feel what about you I I I would be saying the same as well because uh, we when to reach from the level 7 to 5 it's not that much of hard work but to reach from level 5 to 4 it takes lot of consistency lot of practice and moreover fitness that plays a very important role again i'm putting blame on the pandemic <laughs> to for my game not being uh, improved and actually i would say i'm still in the same level as uh, 2020 that's where i stand but i'm enjoying my tennis love to play doubles just as you mentioned because of this winter leagues and all i improved my doubles game a little bit i remember uh, you went to play a tennis tournament of your uh, company how did you do in that i actually won it so it's it's not a great achievement lot <laughs> of players whom i played against for beginners oh, okay so yeah it was okay i have another one coming up so i'm excited about it yeah so it's uh, they don't need to organize a tournament for that they can give a medal <laughs> to you <laughs> no i wouldn't say that there are some good players as well not all of them were beginners yeah and how's uh, your club uh, tennis going like are you playing with the new people um, yeah as i mentioned like in our club we have this um, leagues going on for doubles so mm-hmm. uh, i was runner up of winter league and now i am currently leading in the spring league oh. all doubles <laughs> that's very good <laughs> and uh, yeah i won a singles league as well now uh, I'm ranked number 5 in my club. Oh. That's a good <laughs> top 5 l- looks uh, it, it's good to say that you are top 5 in something. <laughs> nice, very good. What about you? It's good that uh, you are top 5 in your club and you still haven't beaten me. That's that <laughs> makes me feel better. <laughs> We haven't played in a long time. Yeah, I think uh, if we play next time, you have a lot of chances. Uh I'm um, being honest you're playing very good I seen your game last time we played yeah it's very powerful i would say <laughs> <laughs> power is all i got nothing else <laughs> yeah so now let's quickly jump into the atp circuit and um, recently we seen a fantastic uh, tennis games in australian open did you enjoy it did you watch it Yeah, I've seen most of the matches. I felt that the Australian Open this year was not up to the standards. Like I haven't there wasn't a like there wasn't an excellent match I felt. Like, yeah, people might argue that the finals was very good and Nadal did something impossible. Yeah, I'd agree, but uh, but I still feel it's not as great as watching Djokovic play last year. or there weren't any tight matches it was dominance by medvedev in one half of the draw and the other half there were no there was no proper competition for nadal like he did not play a top 10 player i think to reach the finals mm-hmm. yeah yeah makes sense the competition was not that fierce but 
um however the new generation is coming you will tend to see a lot of players uh no winning some losing some you will not see the same consistency as the big 3 that's expected that's why they are called the big 3 of all time that's um, known but it's still good to see players like um, uh, jack um swarev Med- jwarev medvedev playing a very good level of tennis that's good for the future of tennis but uh, what's your uh, take on nadal becoming the most grand slam winner did you expect that i uh, i did not actually i was thinking that djokovic would do that but mm. yeah i'm happier mm. than nadal doing it rather than djokovic doing it <laughs> oh that's very <laughs> kind of you to say that <laughs> be yeah of course fan. nadal has like what 14 french opens mm So 21 is not a big number considering he has 14 French Opens. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Um see I, when I was uh, hearing the news about uh, Novak Djokovic being deported uh, for Australian Open I felt so bad for him like uh, I I still couldn't understand what does the vaccination status help you in any way. That's very um uh, strange of uh, australian tennis committee and the uh, visa committee to decide that what do you think i i don't agree with you on this <laughs> <laughs> uh maybe maybe i feel this way because i don't like djokovic or maybe it's fair i'm not sure mm-hmm. but australian tennis gave visa to djokovic they exempted him from getting vaccinated but it was the government who said he needs to be vaccinated to enter the country so if there is a rule it's rule for all like nothing is over life or safety of the people there are so many australians over there mm. thousands of people come and watch matches if they feel somebody who is not vaccinated is risk for their people so it's right on their part to take the decision yeah agreed from what government is thinking but uh, in a way not agreed that they they lost to uh, like one wonderful uh, tennis player who is a world number one at the moment not playing in their open is a loss for them in a way well that's what we have and uh, maybe i i really hope uh, french uh, open and uh, wimbledon will get to see djokovic yeah it would be good to see people beating djokovic and winning a grand slam <coughs> rather than yeah rather than doing it the other way like mm. djokovic is virtually unbeatable in grand slam matches like one example was him beating nadal in roland garros last year yes that that's unex- like i didn't expect that one to yeah. happen and you could see that nadal didn't had answers to djokovic's questions by end of third set and mm. he it it was in not, not in nadal's nature to give up but i felt like he kind of gave up in that fourth set mm. yeah it's like yeah you are a true grand slam champion when you beat somebody who is best mm-hmm. so that's why i i am not really excited about nadal winning the 21st grand slam australian open like i feel some uh, some of i feel it was given to him he did yeah. not earn it okay okay he did not get to play a top 10 player until the finals and medvedev was playing awesome tennis in the first two sets and then all of a sudden something happens and he starts going for those stupid drop shots <laughs> which is not his not his the original game like mm. okay so you think like uh, the 21st grand slam was presented to nadal than he earned it i would question that one um, because i've never seen a player of uh, nadal's caliber thinking about giving up at any stage okay and he lost the first two sets and coming back and winning the next three sets in a grand slam itself is a amazing achievement so him being to do that in his uh, 21st grand slam that's extra special given his age and the number of injuries he underwent Yeah I agree like 6 months ago he was injured and he did not even knew he was going to enter Australian Open mm. Yeah he deserved to win Yeah but it's <laughs> it's <laughs> it's 21st Grand Slam that's that's something special mm-hmm. But he did not go through that steep tedious process of winning a Grand Slam say if somebody has to win a Grand Slam 
they get to play a top 8 player in the quarter finals and yeah. then they would have a very strong match probably against big 3 in yeah. the semi finals mm. and then they would have to beat somebody else from the big 3 in the finals so there were no big 3 for starters it was mm. only nadal playing and then right when he has to face djokovic in quarter finals djokovic uh, uh, zverev in quarter finals zverev loses in fourth round yeah. and same and he he is supposed to face djokovic in semi finals and djokovic was thrown out of australian open <laughs> yeah so it's a blessing in disguise but um, uh, we never say it's an achievement and maybe no. he would have won it <laughs> yeah maybe he would have won it yeah i i i seriously doubt that he would have beat djokovic though <laughs> yeah Anyway. and it was not nadal's best for performance i could say that he had so many physical problems and everything mm. but still beating medvedev after uh, going down two sets is like a huge task mm. i was listening to commentary and commentators said that it is impossible you mm. can't beat Djok- uh, medvedev when he is two sets ahead yeah yeah and like he proved everything everybody wrong that's what champions do yeah actually there are a lot of people in the tennis circuit who don't give up Uh, nadal is definitely is on the top of that list second one maybe djokovic you know in real life as well djokovic is not giving up on his vaccination status <laughs> <laughs> i don't know yeah, like, that's that's really nice yeah. see he took a stand and he's the uh, he's owning his word yeah. and he's ready to face the consequences that's yeah. really nice so that's what we can learn from them like uh, they make the game so easy and you can learn a lot from their mental attributes as well how to be calm in the the nervous situations that's a big lesson to learn that's the main reason why i watch tennis yeah i always think what would be going through their mind at this point mm. like it's a it would be a huge point and that one point would decide the fate of the match and still they play their best mm. i am a big choker when it's an important <laughs> moment i somehow give away the point so you are like a south african cricket team then <laughs> oh, maybe you could say that <laughs> mhm so you know we have many uh, favorite tennis players but uh, one of our favorite tennis player retired recently one martin del potro i reached to, i used to like him a lot because he's a fan favorite and i really like his forehand <laughs> that's his weapon and um, he did well in one uh, 2019 29 2009 uh, uh US Open US Open and uh, he did well in uh, Olympics as well yeah. so and i've seen some matches in US i think it is in Indian Wells is f- the lot of spanish people who likes him and they admire him so he's retired so did you enjoy del potro's games yeah it's a huge loss i would say del potro is a tremendous player Uh, especially as you mentioned his forehand nobody could hit <laughs> such big forehands consistently as flat as he as flat, flat as he hits mm. with, without the net clearance and putting it in the court it's a really hard thing to do yeah and i was watching uh, 2009 us open finals highlights a couple of days ago after uh. Uh, listening to his retirement <laughs> okay and uh, yeah he he's an excellent he's an excellent player and he has won olympic gold medal i think right i'm not really sure about that i remember he winning he came second silver medal against andy murray i remember that i'm not sure about the gold medal oh, okay then probably it would have yeah. been good he beat djokovic i think in the semi finals mm. then he won the silver i medal. remember uh, he came to the net uh, djokovic came to the net and cried yeah, uh, and that's a very emotional for Del me he was <laughs> consoling him rather than celebrating that yeah. that shows the sportsman spirit exactly so basically more than a tennis player i like uh, del potro as a person it's like there are very very few nice guys on the tennis circuit he's one of them yeah really uh, like is like uh, him i would want to see him more in the tennis circuit maybe as a commentator or somewhere <laughs> maybe coaching someone but uh, it's a big loss for tennis because he's retired at the age of 33 which is very young uh, you can see people like ivan karlovic still playing at the age of 40 with his sir just <laughs> sir. it's a big only loss. sir <laughs> only sir nothing else <laughs> yeah well we love you del potro you are a great great tennis player so chaitanya now tell me about uh, wta women's tennis association are you watching any women's games i did see uh, australian open some matches mm-hmm. 
it was all one sided <laughs> you you know who is going to win it's, it's which, which yeah. is which is very very rare in women's tennis yeah exactly like you literally cannot predict who is going to win in women's <laughs> yeah seriously i did not expect daniela collins to reach finals yeah and uh, and barty she lost only like 20 games or something to reach the finals no, not even a set eh? not even a set wow And That's... she only lost 20 games, which is like, what? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, I think this must be the easiest win for her in her career, whole Grand Slam career. Yeah, yeah this is her third Grand Slam, I think. Mm. Yeah, but th- this has to be the easiest win for her. And, And with the home crowd support, of exactly. course. Exactly. Like, uh, I-, I was reading that uh, Ash Barty is the first woman after 1978 first australian woman yeah. to win the grand slam after 1978 that's a big achievement for her and uh, especially she is uh, from a cricket background so <laughs> that's another uh, thing for me to like more about her so basically as a kid you get to play more sports then you will be once you reach a certain age you will see where you are good at then you i think she also won some kind of a golf tournament in 2020 wow <laughs> she is like a abd villers of uh, <laughs> yeah probably <laughs> abd villers like uh, in even ab i remember he used to be very good at tennis very good at golf very good at rugby very good i don't know how people can be very good at everything <laughs> yeah seriously like See if if you are a tennis player you you, sh- you are not supposed to play cricket well yeah if you are a cricket player you <laughs> can't play tennis well i don't know how they shuffle things and they are best at everything what they do uh, i think uh, from a childhood you know if you keep playing more sports you were you were used to that but uh, yeah i see i remember uh, there's a cross skills like if, for example if you look at ian morgan of Eng- who is a england uh, captain at the moment originally from ireland he used to play a lot of hockey when he was a kid mm-hmm. if you see his shots it the cricket shots when he is power hitting it looks exactly like a uh, hockey shots for me i'm like the way he's hitting the ball oh my god it looks exactly like hockey to me maybe if you play different sports you know there might be some benefits for example if you play volleyball and it's very easy to serve in tennis the motion is the same yeah yeah maybe it's uh, good if you keep playing any sports well when you were a kid that will help you yeah definitely playing any uh, sort of a sport would give you that athleticism <laughs> and also the uh, sporting mind you know yeah. like uh, so basically sport is thinking one step ahead of your opponent yeah and maybe and that one step could be either be you know, mentally or physically as well like you be one step before him to reach that ball yeah that's the advantage you get of the sports if you keep playing from childhood that will help you in I, many ways i read somewhere you need not be good at in all the departments to beat a certain player mm. you just have to do one thing better than your opponent and you yeah. have to force him to do the keep doing the same thing and that makes you wins the match win the matches agreed i can it can't be anything uh, better well said that really really well said and i also just to compliment your point we need to reduce the number of unforced errors we are making i have seen uh, one ted talk <clears throat> the concept the main point in the ted talk is how we can be better than ourselves the day before so he gave a very very good example of novak djokovic right so in 2011 i can't really re- i don't re- really ne- remember the stats but i will say roughly but in 2011 novak djokovic was making like around 30% of uh, unforced errors in a game and by 2015 actually 2011 is one of his uh, best, best career best years seasons. in 2015 he was making maybe like a, a like 25% mistakes just 5% and he already became a world class player yeah. and even if you keep making just 1% less errors from the previous match you are already a great champion you gonna that's this 1% which we are talking it's not very easy to make you know that's what everything is in, in our hands 
it's just you cutting down the mistakes you are playing on the tennis field that makes you a better player discipline <laughs> discipline is everything discipline with your shots like exactly you can't hit glory shots you're not a professional player when somebody realizes that mm. which i haven't yet <laughs> <laughs> then they will definitely be a better player so basically you are saying don't uh, hit the lines just put the ball on the other side of the court yeah there are certain moments where you can go for the lines but i wouldn't say it's wise to go for every point mm. try and go hit a ball down the line for a winner mm. like the, you are not going to get three or four points when you hit an excellent winner it's just one point you could when you could easily get that point by forcing your opponent to make an error where you have more chances of doing that mm. if you play high percentage tennis why go down the line which you are bound to miss like 75% of time either you hit the net or it's it travels past the baseline nice so that's a very good segue into our next topic which is the next gen okay whom in the next gen you see is having this discipline and can be a better player that two players you can watch out for the future when you say next gen does medvedev count ah uh, mm, i don't know because he's already 25 yeah 25 <laughs> maybe someone who's less than 23 alcaraz seems to be playing well yep and ah uh, uh, I don't know I haven't followed this Brooksby match but okay. he played one match against Djokovic yes. uh, and he was awesome in that match even yeah. though he lost but his tennis was excellent in that match I think I can't remember it's 2021 US Open I Yes think. I I remember that one as well um yeah so your picks are uh, Carlos Alcaraz and Brooksby is it not really <laughs> <laughs> So you like Brooksby I uh, I can remember that one match which he played well. Okay. I actually like Yannick Sinner, Sinner but he seems to be choking on big stages. He is mm. not like the match he played against Tsitsipas. I was not expecting that result in the Australian Open. It was he sailed through him like he mm. destroyed him. Tsitsipas destroyed Sinner. For his standards and the way he plays I expected a lot more from him. Mm. So I I would say yeah so basically Alcaraz and Sinner yeah I would say okay. for me i would agree with alcaraz because um, he is dynamic explosive i, I watched the atp next gen mm-hmm. and he was like no real like no need to worry like he'll beat easily like he has that power and he can consistently serve more than 220 200 km per hour as a teenager that's a big weapon to have so i really like to watch uh, carlos alcaraz do well and um, i want to see more of uh, felix oze aliasim i really like him i really love the way he swings his racket like uh, oh it looks so easy and i saw him winning rotterdam recently mm-hmm. i hope he'll win uh, maybe one ma- major uh, masters 1000 and maybe if he reaches a uh, finals of uh, grand slam i'd be happy for this year yeah that would be a really good great achievement for him and he is now canadian number 1 mm shapal vola was playing for so many seasons yeah. and uh, he was consistently stuck in that 9th or 10th rank but being much younger than him this guy overtaking him mm. that's something really nice exactly and after winning rotterdam federer congratulated him in a message it seems oh, okay and federer is his idol <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 true that's true yeah, yeah so yeah so a lot of good things happening for uh, felix then and yeah. he almost beat medvedev in australian open Semis, he had a so. match point <laughs> yeah so I, i was when i saw the highlights i was so unhappy Uh, I wanted Felix to be in finals. Uh, <laughs> maybe it would it's have been coming. much easier for Nadal. <laughs> yeah, it, it, no, it's coming. See, mark my word, Felix will be there in a big stage for sure. Yeah, he will. Yeah, I doubt. Like it might take really long time for people to win ten Grand Slams. I would say it's mm, not going to mm, happen no. soon. I think if somebody wins two Grand Slams in a row. then he'll be considered a legend <laughs> it's very very imp- i think it's almost impossible now because everyone seems to be uh, i don't know very um, like they lose their mind very easily 
and not consistent at all like um, yeah you can't bet on anybody play at the moment in in our uh, when yeah. we are growing up and it used to be those three big three and you can always say in uh, if it is uh, wimbledon okay roger will win that yeah. if it is australian open okay novak will win that french open definitely <laughs> <laughs> nadal and us open maybe one of these three one of these three yeah i was about to say that like djokovic is best at australian open mm. it's really hard to beat him there and i don't need not talk about nadal in french <laughs> open and wimbledon like nobody has won wimbledon other than uh, this big three and mari yeah so far and uh, same with australian open nobody won it that's a proper proper domination of tennis yeah. i think it's almost over now and we are get we get to see this young talent and uh, exciting days are ahead i hope uh, tennis will flourish as it was in the last 20 years yeah, and i hope uh, so now let's go to the wta and who is the most exciting women's player at the moment exciting ah i like igor swantek oh, okay nice yeah she won the first french open which she played yeah yeah and i really like her technique she kind of plays like nadal with lots of top spin and her defense is really good and she has all kinds of shots she, mm. she can slice she has a good volley she has good forehand backhand serve nice she's very consistent yeah I, it has been many years since i've seen such a solid player who just started playing in the tour i think she was in more I, than 3 years in the yeah, tour yeah i remember she won 2019 i think 2019 2020 2019 us open as well she did very well in that i remember vaguely but i remember that name from 2019 yeah yeah, yeah. she is very good player i wanted to see more of emma raducanu i know you don't like her you don't rate her that much but for me oh my god when i was watching the uh, last year um, especially last year uh, wimbledon and uh, the us open and uh, i really really like the way she played for her being so skinny very young to have that much courage to play that aggressive that was extra special for me i hope uh, we'll get to see lot of that i know you will say she did not impress me she is already a grand slam champion <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> and she did it in style like without losing a set yeah which federer did after playing what 25 years of professional tennis mm. she did it in her like very second grand slam so can you say that's a fluke uh, uh i again uh i believe in rankings and numbers she only played <laughs> one top 10 player in the entire us open okay she only played belinda bencic i think nobody else from the top 10 on the other hand leila fernandez she had to come through a very tough draw all yeah. close three setter matches mm. i was kind of ro- rooting for leila fernandez to win us open mm. yeah but radakan outclassed her like uh I was thinking she will start fight fighting mm. back but Radakano did not give her that chance she was aggressive she kept hitting winners after winners after winners yeah she is a really good player but there are some grand slam champions for example do you remember elena ostapenko <laughs> she won a french open and <laughs> do you do you know what she's doing now yeah. there are certain players in women's tennis who win a grand slam and then they are yeah. nobody after that exactly yeah i she, she still has to prove in some other way that she belongs in the big stages yeah i think she has only won one wta match after that wow she played four tournaments and she only won one match and she lost in second round of australian open this year right i know well yeah she's an exciting player to watch out for i uh, yeah, game style is really good really good but uh, yeah and of her course consistency she is, is only 17 right or 18 18, 18. Yes. yeah she, she has lot lot of years ahead of her and like not everybody is nadal you can't <laughs> come as a teenager and keep winning grand slams yeah. and keep con- continue doing that she still needs some time and maturity and the way to handle the uh celebrity status which yeah. she got to handle the media and everything nice yeah. maybe so she might become a good player but yeah she's okay enough i don't see her to be mm. an excellent player but she's she's a good player nice okay our last segment for today's podcast which is uh, i know french open is uh, 
three months away from now but uh, what are your early predictions and are you going to french open yeah i'm planning to go to french open this year and that would be awesome i i wanted to go to this fourth round matches because you can watch players like sitting in the front of first row <laughs> yeah. and see some good players playing uh i'm planning to go to french open I have to see and i tickets are still available okay <laughs> That's something nice this very good uh, yeah i wanted to be there but uh, i cannot <laughs> maybe after a few years we'll plan but um, yeah we really enjoyed our trip to wimbledon oh yeah that was fantastic that was and awesome. uh, i wanted to go again <laughs> maybe one day very soon and uh, yeah now coming to the last question who is your uh, early predictions of french open men's singles and maybe women singles women singles do you think anybody could predict that <laughs> you can't you can't predict <laughs> maybe i would say i would say someone like uh, ash barty might have a slight chance or if um, that girl from romania halep halep if she is fit she can give a good run halep just started coming back from an injury and i've seen her play mm. she is not at, at her best at the moment mm. you never know anything might happen in three yeah. months yeah and i really like halep and mm. i think i and i want her to win yeah but i think it might be tough for her this french open mm. and but his game suits uh, clay i okay. feel Then so she nice. might stand a chance mm-hmm. to win but you never know in women's tennis anything <laughs> can happen like yeah. i think last year or i think last year uh, but is the only player to reach all four the fourth round in all four grand wow. slams nobody else that's amazing fourth round in all the grand that's slams that's amazing that tells how much it oscillates between yeah, the players in very inconsistent tennis. very very inconsistent uh, so men's singles uh, i know people will say it's going to be nadal <laughs> <laughs> I, i would be one of them but i i don't know like i can't see anybody better than nadal at the moment but mm. to win a french open you need to be at 100% physically best mm. physicality matters a lot in french, french open. open yeah so i think nadal is not there still okay he was still struggling uh, for example the shapovalov's match he played in australian open he he struggled a lot after first two sets and somehow he managed to win because he's a champion mm. and he's nadal he somehow mm. managed to win so that might come into play like if you get a tough draw if you have to play tough quarters and tough semi finals then physicality definitely comes into play and that might be hard for nadal mm. S- having said that i don't think there is a player who could challenge nadal if djokovic is not playing roland garros how, how about diego swatchman diego swatchman no i i think he doesn't have any chance of winning french open at okay. least not this year okay and i think he medvedev medvedev he can't play on clay courts <laughs> so basically this only one player who can give a bit of fight dominic team dominic team and uh, he's uh, coming slowly into the circuit but yeah. it will take a lot of time for him to establish that mark was he was making in uh, late 2019 early 2020s but uh, covid hit him very badly i would say like uh, with the form with the kind of form he was in in the early 2020s he would have won at least another couple of grand slams but yeah uh, easily and uh, i think i would say sitsipas has stands some chance because he's good in clay mm-hmm. so i would i would say one of uh, nadal yeah, he's sitsipas. out of form sitsipas is out of form at the moment i feel mm. he's not playing his best tennis uh, Nobody is playing their best tennis what, at this what, point. What's your take on Berrettini? Berrettini. Do you think his game style suits uh, Clay? No. It's very aggressive. I think yeah. uh, he's good for... Uh, his serve and plus one is good. For That him. isn't good enough on Clay court. Wimbledon, I think it's... it's yeah, it, su- it, might, it suits Wimbledon grass courts a lot. Mm. But his backhand is weak. Yeah. Like... if you get a play if you gonna play somebody like nadal or djokovic who keeps going to your backhand uh, often like mm. you, you get like 70% of the balls to your backhand it's gonna be really tough for berrettini but yeah. he gave a good fight in last year's wimbledon finals nice so basically we have uh, exciting uh, tennis tournaments coming up uh, miami open 
yeah sunshine and, double uh, uh, indian wells in indian miami. wells miami and uh, i'm really excited to see if um, novak plays there and win maybe one of these two then then he'll be well placed for a french open that's what i'm looking for i think uh, i read somewhere that he's going to play rome play in rome okay i don't think he's planning to play before that mm-hmm. that's a long way now from now yeah i want to see him badly it's been a long long time since i saw him play he did not play after uh, us open right wow. jeez yeah oh long did he he played in the atp finals no did he play in the atp finals oh maybe he played here yeah. but maybe he lost very early stages i think who won this time medvedev yeah medvedev won no I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> no, there are a lot of things happening. Yeah. And I, I recently this ATP Cup as well, but I, I felt like, when did it happen? <laughs> yeah, uh, this time, not many top players played mm. ATP Cup. I think it was only Zverev who played. Yeah. And, and Medvedev played, of course. Of course, they'll win everything. Yeah, I know, we are seeing a storm and, uh, and it's snowing. snowing, which is very rare for Ireland to see snow. uh the storm unus is here uh chaitanya has to go long way from now <laughs> thanks for uh, coming to do the podcast chaitanya we really appreciate that in the midst of the storm we, you gave us some time to do the podcast and talk about uh, tennis that's really oh, nice of you any time any time <laughs> for tennis <laughs> <laughs> exactly that's all for today's podcast guys thank you so much bye bye